So I'm going to answer a question that we get very commonly, which is, do you need capacity estimation in system design interviews? So first, I'm going to argue that you don't need it, but if the interviewer expects you to do it, then you should spend as less time as possible on this. Then I go over how capacity estimation became popular in system design interviews. And then I'm going to tell you why it doesn't really impact your actual interview result. So first, let's talk about why you don't need this. So first, I'm going to give you an example of capacity estimation. So let's say you're asked to design YouTube and you come up with a fake YouTube scenario that let's say we have 1 million users. Now with capacity estimation, what you'll try to do is you're going to estimate how much storage these videos are going to need, or you're going to estimate the bandwidth for these users. Now, to some extent, when you're actually designing the system. This might be very useful because it helps you in capacity planning, but I'll show you why in an interview it really doesn't matter. So I argue that you should spend really less time on this. And here's why. In most cases, it doesn't really impact your design. If you're designing something for scale, the scalable design remains very similar. You're, you use similar techniques like sharding, uh, using load balancers, partitioning, and things like that. And so if you're designing for scale, the actual design won't change much by these estimates of how much storage you need. Sure, your provisioning of devices and capacity planning might change, but that's not the goal of a system design interview. The goal of a system design interview is to design a system and to implement good practices to scale the system. The second reason is that it becomes an isolated math problem. When you, you try to estimate the storage uh, that's needed by your system, it becomes a completely separate problem from your actual system design. And so you spend a good five, 10 minutes just doing these calculations. At the end of the day, it doesn't really affect your design. And of course, the third reason, as we mentioned, is that you waste valuable time on this. In a system design interview, every minute counts. And the real value in a system design interview is when you really get deeper into the systems and you start evaluating trade-offs and start implementing things in a more complex way. That's the thing that really helps you ace the interview. And doing these calculations really doesn't give a lot of signal to the interviewer about your design skills and your, your, your technical skills. It gives some signal about your math skills and that you can estimate things, but really it's not going to make or break your interview. And so what we recommend here is that if the interviewer expects you to estimate capacity, try to do this quickly and move ahead to the design. Another good trick I like to use is that at the beginning of the interview, after you've spec'd out your design, ask the interviewer if they expect you to estimate the capacity. A lot of interviewers actually don't expect you to estimate the capacity. In fact, a lot of times this becomes uh, premature planning because you start estimating how much storage your system needs before, but you don't even know at the beginning of the question how you're storing things, what you're storing. And so estimating things before you even know your design, before you even know how you're implementing your system is really premature. 